Oh, well, we're back here in Bothell, everybody. Thank God. That's all I gotta say about that. We watched WCW Saturday Night. I gotta say one more thing. One of our very, very loyal uh, listeners and tweeters, everything like that, he's like, no more going to the beach. No more leaving your house. I'm like, brother, I'm not getting divorced, dude. Like, sometimes we have to go on a vacation. It was everything I love about wrestling. Squash match. The big dudes kill these little dudes. It's like the fans are going nuts. It's got an awesome song associated with it. The Amateur Challenge, which Jesse should be called, thinks should be called the Idiot Challenge. What a bunch of idiots. What a bunch of idiots, he says. (laughs) Davey Boy Smith versus Sledgehammer McGill. Yeah! Sledgehammer my fucking gill. It's not even like he's a star. He's no. a job guy he's named horrible. Sledgehammer McGill. An actual sledgehammer may have had a better match. Yes. No. <laughs> well. The Awesome Kongs versus Rick James and Buddy Ryan. Not that Rick James and not that Buddy Ryan either. And, and not that Awesome Kong. And he grabs that wheel and he spins it as fast as he can. And it's going around and around like an airplane propeller. And he's going bang, 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 bang. And the graphic reads... To be continued at Halloween Havoc, and the show fades to black with the wheel still spinning. What is your favorite time looking after Brian when he was a child? The times when I could put him in the closet. Mm-hmm. Okay. Brian, you realize you're celebrating child abuse? <laughs> what do you mean, oh, a closet? Know. Did you think that by now we would have flying cars like in the Jetsons? Could have a lot of crashes. <laughs> knock, knock. She said, who's there? And I said, boo. And she said, ha, 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 She thought that was funny. <laughs> she does not get jokes. Face to face, Undertaker. <laughs> and it's a little booklet all about the Undertaker. I sent you a picture, Brian. Yeah, you know, I, I think you did could send you, me a picture. Could you put it on the air? Uh, well, let's see what I can do here. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact Jared. Okay. And I'm going to send him this picture, Granny. Okay. And so he's going to try to put it here on the air so we can Whoa. all see face-to-face with Undertaker. Yay. Jared doesn't appear to be in much of a hurry here, so <laughs> maybe we'll put that picture up next week. All right. Yep. Oops, something's happening here. We're slowly working on it. You know, some people get mad that uh, we do things on the video that they don't get to see on the audio because they're only audio subscribers. But I don't know what to tell you. If ever there was a reason to sign up at video.f4wonline.com, it would be so you could see the cover of Face Two. Hey, there it is right there. Look at that. Hey. I was unprepared for the pink polka dot background. (laughs) Yeah, why is there pink polka dots in the background? That is the worst Wheaties box I've ever seen. And why does he look like he's like uh, nine years old? Craig? Gold star. Thank you. <laughs> That's tremendous. Booker T sees an ad for Brooks and Dunn, in which either Brooks or Dunn is wearing a flaming shirt. Mm-hmm. They buy some of these shirts. They cut the sleeves off and make hats out of the sleeves. Mm-hmm. This is the most ghetto story. But That's how Harlem Heat got their gear. He claimed Booker T had the greatest music in the history of WCW. Ice Train. Had the greatest music in the history of World Championship Wrestling. Neither uh, number was all that impressive this week. Nielsen, I mean, you think this show has problems? Brother, we have less problems here than the Nielsen Company does, which has been doing this for decades. They cannot get anything going, ever. I didn't notice until the very end, but did you see Scarlet's platform boots? No. The woman is on stilts at ringside. Wow. Like a foot taller. I see them standing in the ring setting this match up. And all I can think is, I've seen it. We've been there, done that. Dude, I've already seen this. I don't need to see it again. Takeover in your house will be Sunday, June 13th, along with your host, Todd Pettengill. What a birthday present. No, that's true. Happy birthday. Yeah. It says, quote, you are cordially invited to the greatest moment of your lives. Cordially? Cordially. Cordially. I'm not good at podcasting. Point is, the greatest moment of our lives it's going to be the Frankie Monet world premiere in two weeks. NXT has needed a new act for a long, long time, and this group has tons and tons of tons of potential. This was a very successful introduction. So Kyle says, It's good to see you back! 
Bobby says, It's good to be back! Kyle says, I don't know if you know, Bobby, but I'm doing my own thing now. He's screaming to the sky, why, why, why? And it fades to black and you can still hear him screaming, why, why? I love Cameron Grimes, he's my hero. Why did I automatically think if this match would have been wrestled anywhere else in the world, it would have been better? And you know what I concluded? Because of the way that they shoot these fucking matches. Because of the cuts and because of the zooming and because of all of those things that you see, the way they shoot matches in WWE, that's unlike how they shoot matches anywhere else in the world. You gotta be facing the hard cam. All of this shit, it really hit me that, like, that's the thing that really irritates me when I watch some of these matches. Moxie comes out with Wild Thing by the Trogs as his theme song, which is a very odd choice. I know he's a very odd guy, so that helps, but the song came out in 1966. To give you an idea of how long ago that was, Yuji Nagata was born in 1968. <laughs> the song's older than Yuji is. This promo felt like a drunk promo that needed to go back and edited by a sober person. He's just all over the place. Half the emails I got were like how Cody's going to run away with best promo in the Observer Awards. And the other half were about how it was a horrible promo. Like they just hated everything that he said. It was like half the people just sat there. And the other half stand up and they're cheering and applauding. All right. So it was very, uh, this was interesting. They won't be a team anymore in any promotion, I assume. And so help me God, almost in these exact words, it is to the back. Yeah, that sucked a lot. They could have just counted Orange out, and it would have been Kenny Omega and Pac in the pay-per-view. But they don't want to take this away from Orange Cassidy. It's like, what the fuck do we do? So on the fly, they figured out the idea of, we'll send Callus and Omega out early, because they were going to come out later anyway for some spot. That's Then they did the audible of knocking out Pac, and they got everywhere that they wanted to go. It was a, it was a shitty WWE-style finish, but that's what they came up with on the fly. When Sammy turns on this faucet, and whatever fluid they have is barely making it into the ring, and then Pinnacle is running into it to get hit, and then taking these big giant bumps, it was hokey, and it was weak, and it was stupid. Darby lost via submission or death or whatever it was. Clean in the middle of the ring, he was defeated by, on this night, the better man. See, th th this is the key. But nobody came out of this show thinking any less of Darby. Yes. If Darby. anything, they thought much more of Darby. The lows of AEW were lower than the lows of NXT. Mm -hmm. There was fucking nothing on either show as good as that Darby Allen Miro deal. I'm giving a tie. When those shows were done, I thought, geez, NXT was way better. And I'm going over my notes here. I realize it's much, much closer than I thought. I am still going to vote for NXT, but it's much closer than I thought at the time. Bo both shows were very good.